Hello friends, so in this video we are going to learn about fast and slow pointers. This is a really popular coding pattern technique that is used in a specific type of problem. This is also known as a rabbit and a tortoise problem or hare and a tortoise problem. Uh, in this method, uh, basically we use a fast and slow pointers to move across any array or any linked list. So in this video, I'm going to explain you three things. First, I'm going to explain you that what this fast and slow pointer technique is. Then I'm going to explain that where it is applicable and what type of problems it can solve. And then I'm going to show you three different real life lead code examples that are being asked in bunch of different companies multiple times. So first, let's understand what does a fast and slow pointer approach means. Uh, as the name suggests, we are going to use two different pointers. First one is going to be a fast pointer and second one is going to be the slow pointer. They both are going to start at the same time, but there is one key difference and the key difference is that fast pointer is going to take multiple jumps. So it can it can be like two jumps, three jumps, four jumps, something like that. In, in meanwhile, it is going to take multiple jumps faster compared to the slower pointer, which is only going to take one jump every single iteration. So slower pointer is going to move in the conventional manner of the way we move pointers. But fast pointer, let's say for uh, this example and most of the example, you are going to consider it as run, taking two jumps at a time. So moving twice faster than the slower pointer. So in the first iteration, slow pointer is going to come over here. Meanwhile, fast pointer is going to come over here. During the next iteration, again, slow pointer is going to end up over here because it will take one more jump. But fast pointer will end up over here. Same way, if we do one more iteration, basically slow pointer is going to end up over here. Uh, meanwhile, fast pointer is going to end up over here. So with every single iteration, we would be able to see that the difference between the slow and fast pointer keeps on increasing. And uh, eventually what would happen is that fast pointer would keep on jumping two steps at a time and it would reach to the end of our uh, given input. Uh, so in this case, we are running it over array. And uh, meanwhile, slow pointer would be somewhere in the middle and that would be able to give us some important information. Same thing can be applied for the fast and slow pointer in the linked list as well, where even for the linked list, we will have both fast and slow pointer starting at the same position. But fast pointer is going to take two jumps at a time and it would reach to the end much quicker in three iterations only. Meanwhile, for slow pointer in this case, after three iteration, it is going to stay somewhere over here. So somewhere in the middle. And uh, that brings us to the next point that where do we actually use fast and slow pointer? And I mentioned that when the fast pointer reaches to the end, slow pointer is somewhere in the middle. And that is exactly one of the most popular use cases of a fast and slow pointer technique, where if you are given any single array or any single linked list and you want to find the middle point of that value, then if you use fast and slow pointer technique, you would be able to find the middle pointer quite easily without using any extra additional space because the fast pointer would reach to the end uh, and during the same amount of iterations, the starting pointer would have reached to the mid pointer and that that way we can return the middle of the array or linked list quite easily. So this is one of the very popular use case. But the second popular use case that is even better than this one is to detect cycles. Uh, and you would be asking that how can we detect cycles using fast and slow pointers. So this I'm going to show you on uh, next during one of the examples. But remember, these two are very important use cases that we typically use for a fast and slow pointer technique or a hare and uh, tortoise kind of a problem. So now let's jump on to the examples. And if we see the first example I'm going to show you is to find the middle of a single linked list. As I mentioned that we can use fast and slow pointer technique to find the middle of any linked list or array. And this has been an important problem and asked in some of the most popular companies like Adobe, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, Uber, Microsoft. So you can imagine that all of the top companies like asking these kind of problems. So let's just go to the problem statement. And basically the problem statement is quite simple that we are given the head of a singly linked list. Now, if you know anything about singly linked list in the singly linked link list, we only know that what is the next pointer value from the current node. Nothing more than that. We don't know how many total number of nodes are present. We also don't even have the ability to go back to the previous node. So in this case, finding the middle pointer could become a little bit tricky, but the trick you already know what we are going to use is that uh, suppose we are given any single linked list. Uh, basically, we are going to use two pointers and one is going to be the fast pointer and second one is going to be the slow pointer. So in this case, I'm taking five, uh, five element linked list and let me just mark it as one, two, three, four, five. So if we use a fast and slow pointer, this is going to be the fast pointer. This is going to be the slow pointer. 
fast pointer is going to make two jumps at a time so fast pointer is going to end up over here after the first iteration meanwhile slow pointer is going to end up over here after the first iteration now every single time we will check that whether the fast pointer is located at the end of the linked list or not how can we determine we can determine by checking that if the fast pointer value if that is equal to null then we know that we have reached to the end of the loop because it could be possible that uh, say for example for some reason fast pointer is at here and if it tries to take two jumps it would not be able to do it because it will reach to the value that is null so that way we can determine that fast pointer has reached to the end of the loop the second possibility is that the fast dot next is equal to null that is also means that now currently fast pointer is located over here and the next value for from this one is a null value so if we take a look at these two uh, conditions we would be able to determine that whether fast pointer is at the end of the loop or not now in this case during the second iteration fast pointer is going to end up over here and during the second iteration again slow pointer is going to end up over here now if we do fast dot next then we would be able to find a null value which means this is the end of the linked list the moment we identify that the fast pointer is at the end of the linked list which means whatever the position of the slow pointer is this is going to be the middle pointer of our linked list and this is the whole solution uh, and you see how efficiently and how beautifully we were able to come up with the solution if because we use fast and slow pointer try to imagine if you want to solve it other way like the conventional way what what would be the approach you would take you would have a counter called n where you are going to mark that what are the number of nodes this currently linked list have then you are going to have a pointer and then you are going to move that pointer all the way towards the end the moment you reach to the end you would have your value n that says that there are five elements in the linked list then again you will start from the beginning and then again you would reach to the element number three and then you would return that this three is going to be the middle of the linked list so this is going to be the conventional solution but because we use fast and slow pointer we would we were able to complete this whole solution pretty quickly in a single iteration only with three different type of uh, iterations inside the linked list so if we see time complexity in this case using the fast and slow pointer the time complexity would typically be big of n divided by 2 because remember this fast pointer doesn't have to jump through every single value uh, it takes two jumps at a time which means we are already saving some uh, iterations in our uh, algorithm but in general if you would have to write it you can write it as big of n and you know the another beautiful part of this one is that the space complexity for this approach is actually big of one because we don't have to we don't need any other data structure where we need to st uh, store some value so this is the time and space complexity and this is a beautiful approach that you are able to solve using the uh, fast and slow pointer okay so let's see the coding solution for the middle of the linked list problem basically first of all we are going to initialize two pointers fast and slow pointer and we are going to position both to the head of our given list node now we are simply going to run a while loop that while fast is not equal to null and fast dot not next is not equal to null we are simply going to keep on incrementing the values of slow pointer and the fast pointer while where slow pointer is going to move conventionally to the next element meanwhile fast pointer is going to move two steps forward and uh, is going to run twice the speed of the slow pointer the moment this while loop ends uh, the position of the slow pointer is going to be the position of the middle node and we are going to return that let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs 100% faster than all the other solution and that is because the runtime is 0 milliseconds and this is a very simple problem to solve let's try to find another uh, example and that is linked list cycle now this is also a really popular problem and if we see some companies like amazon apple bloomberg google goldman sachs microsoft uh, nvidia facebook so they have all asked this problem which means that this is an important problem you can at least understand that now i already explained you before that uh, how you were able to find the middle pointer but i haven't shown you that how you can detect a cycle inside the linked list and if you see this is greatly like problem on linked list so which is uh, on lead code so which is pretty awesome um, we should always try to aim for more like problems because they have been widely accepted by communities uh, and the interviewing community as well so in this example basically we are given the head of a linked list and we need to determine that whether the linked list has a cycle inside it or not so what are some of the examples that we can come up with so we can have a linked list that looks like this okay let me just quickly draw it so this is one of the linked list 
where we can see that there are no cycles we are just going simply straight forward and eventually the last node calls the next node as null which means we can define that this is a legitimate scenario there is no cycle in this linked list so if if say for example if we are given an example like this what would be the best approach to see that whether this linked list contains a cycle or not we can have a pointer let's just name it as p and we are going to move to the next element every single time and then we would try to see that whether this this p is able to reach to the end node that is equal to null or not if it reaches to the end node that is equal to null which means that we we can for sure say that there are no cycles in this problem okay but this approach is very limited and it will only work for the cases where there are actually no cycles uh, what would happen in a case where say for an example rather than the six pointing towards the next node that is null uh, this six points to the next node that is three and now what would happen is that our counter p is going to keep on moving to the next element again and again and again eventually what would happen is that p is going to end up over here then p would again come back to this 3 and then again uh, p would keep on doing the same thing again and again and again because remember this is a linked list and uh, say this is a singly linked list so we can't even go back so we don't know so now what would you do in this problem to solve this one well uh, one approach comes to our mind is that again we are going to use the same same single pointer approach with the p and at the same time we are going to have a hash set now what this hash set is going to do is that say for example if we have visited some node already before and that same node appears again which means we would be able to determine that there is a cycle inside the linked list and this approach would be able to work as ex expected because during the first iteration of this p for all the elements these are unique elements they are not being repeated so the hash set we would add all the entries of uh, one two three four five six and then the moment from this six we would try to come back to this position and this node number three we notice that this has already been visited in that case we can determine that because this three has already been visited and we are revisiting the same topic again then immediately we can uh, terminate this and say that there has been a cycle detected and we would be able to solve this problem the moment you would give this solution in your interview your interviewer is going to ask you a very simple problem and the problem is that what would be the time and space complexity for this approach the time complexity in this case is going to be big o of n because we are doing a single pointer iteration in like single time but for the space complexity the space complexity is also going to be big o of n because we were using an additional hash set and your interviewer is going to ask you a very simple thing that i do not want the space complexity to be big o of n and now you are stuck because you were thinking in just one dimension and you were pretty happy that hey i found the solution and i am just uh, ruling this interview and i am go going to get job and whatnot but that would be a small thing in your thinking you will have to uh, broaden your horizon and try to think about other approaches because now you have your interviewer to just told you that hey you want to solve this problem and we go off one space complexity lucky for you because i'm explaining this uh, fast and slow pointer technique you already know that what is going to be the solution the solution is going to be a fast and slow pointer technique for this one as well and how we are going to use it same way we are using all the fast and slow pointer techniques that we are going to have a fast pointer over here we are going to have a slow pointer over here what we, what we will do in this case is that fast and slow pointer are going to move in their own directions if say for an example there does not exist any single uh, cycle in this case and the next point it is pointing to is null what would happen fast pointer would come over here okay meanwhile slow pointer would come over here again fast pointer would come over here meanwhile slow pointer would come over here now from this pos position if fast pointer moves to the next element it would encounter a value that is null the moment fast pointer encounters a value that is null we can immediately say that there are no cycles so okay that took care of the scenario where there are no cycles we or we can already solve this one now what would be the next approach uh, the next approach is quite simple now we need to see that what would happen in the scenario where there exists a cycle uh, so again let's just create a cycle in this case and now let's see that what would happen okay now a uh, same way fast pointer is going to make two iterations so fast pointer is going to end up over here the slow pointer is going to make one iteration so the slow pointer is going to end up over here okay let me get rid of these two again if we repeat the same process so now fast pointer makes two iterations so fast pointer is going to end up over here slow pointer is going to make one iteration so slow pointer is going to end up over here again let me get rid of the old entries uh, same way fast pointer now again takes two iterations what would happen is that fast pointer would 
end up over here where slow pointer is already the moment we identify that the fast and slow pointer are located at the same position and during the traversal fast pointer came up to the same place where slow pointer was or slow pointer came up to the same place where fast pointer was in either case we can determine that we found a cycle okay now in this case fast pointer came up at a place where slow pointer was already at what would let's see what would happen if we had cycle that is located uh, from the 6 to 2 what would happen in this case okay again fast pointer fast pointer fast pointer and uh, for three iterations the there is going to be slow pointer slow pointer and slow pointer and this is the current scenario so now let's just get the latest values so these are the fast and slow pointer entries now if we if the fast pointer takes two jumps the fast pointer is going to end up over here now if the slow pointer takes one more jump slow pointer is going to end up over here again what would happen is that now again fast pointer is going to take two more jumps so fast pointer is going to end up over here slow pointer is going to take one more jump so slow pointer is going to end up over here now again fast pointer is going to take two more jumps so now fast pointer end up so ends up over here where slow pointer already was again we find the similarity which means we detected the cycle and we can return true that yes there exists cycle in this linked list so this is the most beautiful way to solve this problem where you simply use two pointers of last and slow pointer and you immediately find the solution if we see time complexity in this case the time complexity is going to be big of n because we are not doing any more work than that so if we see space complexity this is the most critical part apart from using couple of pointers we are not using any additional space so space complexity is also constant and this will make your interviewer giggle because he just found the right candidate so let's see the coding solution for linked list cycle problem so first we are going to check for an edge case that if the given head is equal to null we are going to return false immediately because that's like the simplest thing to do now if that is not the case we are going to initialize two values pass pointer and slow pointer and we are going to see for the condition that while slow is not equal to fast fast pointer is keep on going to incrementing and slow pointer is going to keep on incrementing at the same time we are also going to check that if the fast pointer is equal to null or fast dot next pointer is equal to null which means we have reached to the end of the linked list and we haven't found the uh, cycle we can return false, false immediately that there is no cycle found if that is not the case and if we get out of the loop which means that the, we detected a cycle because we will only get out of the loop when slow and fast pointer comes at the same position and if that that happens we will return true so let's try to run this case and seems like our solution is working let's submit this code and our code runs 100 percent faster again because the runtime is again zero millisecond i'm not doing anything special over. now let's just move on to the next question which is i found this problem to be very unique problem and very good problem like i was pre pretty happy with this problem uh, i know some people might like it some people not like it but in my opinion everyone should at least go and uh, try to solve this problem at least once because it's it's too much fun i found it hilarious uh, the problem is a happy number problem and if we see some of the popular companies who have already asked this there are companies like amazon google facebook yahoo apple bloomberg uh, bytedance uber tiktok microsoft so all the top tier companies have asked this question because this question in my opinion is like awesome problem okay uh if we see this is pretty easy problem and this has been liked by a bunch of people we need to write an algorithm in this problem to determine at that if the given number n is a happy number or not now and we are given some definition that what defines a number to be happy so basically what defines a number to be happy is that starting with any positive integer replace the number of number by the sum of squares of its digits i'll explain you what does this mean next thing it says that repeat this pro process until we find that the numbers the number equals to one or the loop endlessly runs in a cycle uh, that does not include one so if we do this first procedure there are two possibilities that eventually it would lead us to a value where the total value becomes one or eventually it would lead us to a scenario where it's keep on going in circles again and again and again and we won't we would never be able to reach to this value number one so if we are stuck inside the loop which means number is not happy if we are able to reach to this value number one which means number is happy 
and this is what we need to do whether uh, to determine whether the number is happy or not okay so now let's see some examples to know that what if the number is happy or not suppose we are given a number n is equal to 19 so now let's try to read the first line what it is asking us to say uh, basically the first line defines that we need to check that whether starting from any positive integer replace the number by the sum of its squares of its digits so what are the digits of this n it's 1 and 9 so what we are going to do is we are going to replace this 19 with a sum of its square of its digits so digits are 1 and 9 square of 1 is 1 square plus 9 square sum of these two we need to do so this is going to be 1 plus 9 square is going to be 81 so this answer is going to be 82 so in the next iteration we are now going to have the value 82 again let's repeat the same process so 8 square plus 2 square so this is going to be 64 plus 4 so this is going to be 68 okay again let's repeat the same process so 68 now again uh, 6 square plus 8 square so this value is going to be 36 plus 64 so this value is going to lead us to value number 100 again let's repeat the same process so 100 so now we are going to do 1 square plus 0 square plus 0 square so now this value is going to end up at position number 1 now since this is position number 1 even if we do the next value for this one the answer is going to be 1 and this is going to remain as it is and the last condition over here defines that those numbers for which process ends in 1 are happy which means we can determine that this number 19 is happy same way we can determine that this number 82 is also happy because if we are given number 82 as the uh, input over here again we would repeat the same process it would lead us to value number 1 and that is going to be the answer so in this case uh, our original input was 19 so let's just keep it as 19 19 is a happy number so we can return true in this case this is the whole method and this is the whole procedure now you know that for this scenario this value is true let's try to take one more example where the answer is not going to be true now suppose we are given the number n is equal to 2 the 2 square is going to be value number 4 okay so next iteration is going to be 4 again for 4 4 square is going to be value number 16 so again for 16 the now the value is going to be 1 square plus 6 square so that is going to be 37 again for the value number 37 it's going to be 9 plus 49 that is going to become the value of 58 again for 58 it is going to be 5 squares so 25 plus uh, 8 square 64 uh, now this time the total is going to become 89 again for 89 it's going to be 8 square to be 64 plus 9 square to be 81 so the total value is going to be 145 again for 145 we are going to do 1 square plus 4 square plus 5 square so it's going to be 1 plus 16 plus 25 so the total is going to be 42 again for 42 it is going to be 4 square plus 2 square so that is going to be 16 plus 4 so the total is going to be 20 again for value number 20 we are going to do 2 square plus 0 square so 2 square plus 0 square is actually going to give us the value of 4 the question is have we seen 4 before yes 4 is actually present right over here so even if from 4 if we keep on repeating the same process what would happen is that the next value we would get is going to be 16 the value further that is going to be 37 eventually it would keep on leading us to this value number 4 and then we would be stuck inside this loop and we won't be able to get out so basically we would never be able to come up with a value that is equal to 1 and this number is always going to be a not a happy number now if let's just take a step back what we did is that starting from n is equal to value number 2 if we just plot all the lines in a sequence how would those lines look like and from this value 20 again this is going to point to value number 4 so this is how it will look like so now what we did is that from this starting value we know the formula on how to generate all of these values initially we are not given these as any like linked list or an array but this is a sequence that is derived from this value number 2 based on the mathematical equation we are told to do the square of its digits and the sum of that eventually this leads to a position where we are coming back to the same position which means we are detecting a cycle now you know the moment we detect a cycle there are actually two ways to solve this problem first way is that we actually keep track of all of these values inside our hash set and inside the hash set we will see that whether this value number 4 has been visited before or not before adding that to our chain 
if it has been visited we can clearly detect that there is a cycle found and then we can return that this is not a happy number immediately because we identify a cycle but with this hash set approach the space complexity in this approach would, would end up at big o of n again so this is not what we wanted and we want to do something better and this is what your interviewer is going to ask you that can you do this without using a hash set and again for this problem since this is a detecting detecting cycle problem we are going to use one of the most beautiful concepts that we learned recently and that is the fast and slow pointer concept where fast pointer is going to do two iterations at a time and slow pointer is going to do one iteration at a time and the moment fast pointer and slow pointer ends up at the same position we can determine that the cycle has been detected if that is not the case and somehow we found that the fast pointer ends up at position number one or fast dot next position is also one if either of these two cases then the number is happy if that is not the case and if fast is equal to slow then cycle is detected which means the number is not happy and this is what we need to prove so let's just see a demo of fast and slow pointer in action after first iteration fast pointer would end up over here slow pointer would end up over here again fast pointer would end up over here now this time again slow pointer would end up over here now this is where slow pointer would end up this is where fast pointer would end up after 145 the fast pointer would end up over here and slow pointer would have been here now again from this position fast pointer would again come back to this position number four and meanwhile slow pointer would be here after two iterations this is where the fast pointer would be let me clean this up a bit so to make things more readable uh, and at the same time the slow pointer is going to be located over here after two iterations fast pointer would be over here and now slow pointer would be over here after again that fast pointer would end up at the same position where slow pointer is which means that a cycle has been detected and we can immediately say that this is not a happy number for this value number two and this is the solution we can return again we can repeat the same process for this value number 19 because even if we see for 19 let's just try to create a similar plot for value number 19 okay, so this is the plot for value number 19 currently this is the fast pointer this is a slow pointer fast pointer jumps two places slow pointer jumps one place again fast pointer point jumps two places fast pointer is currently located at position number one meanwhile slow pointer is here but that doesn't matter because we find fast pointer is equal to one which means number is happy which means we can return true that the number is happy and this is what we want so see how beautifully we solve this problem and now you would asking you would ask that how can we actually generate this sequence well in the code what we will simply do is that we can actually create a helper method whose entire task is that if you give a number as the input it would be able to generate that what would be the next value and this is pretty easy to do because this is a, just a simple few mathematical steps we have to follow so that i'll show you in the code how we are able to do it and then all it becomes is to find that whether for the sequence that we are making whether we are reached to the value one that is the end value or are we detecting a cycle and this is how the power of two pointers are being in place and you are able to solve this problem pretty easily if we see time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n and the space complexity the most beautiful thing big o of one because we use the fast and slow pointer method or we can also call it the hare and tortoise method or we can also i i like to call this as if and ugwe method so whatever you want to call it use it in your interview your interviewer is going to be impressed and let's move on to the code now let's see the coding solution for the happy number lead code problem first of all we are going to create a method that would allow us to find the uh, total sum for any given integers so what this method is going to do is that this is going to calculate that uh, what is the total sum of the square of all the digits that are present inside uh, our given number n and in the end this is going to return the total sum so this total sum would be the input for the next element uh, if i want to give it through the example suppose if we give the 19 as the input for this get next method this would return us the total sum of value as 82 and the next input would be 82 so we would get value as 68 so this is just for explanation now let's just get back to our main method uh, where we are again going to have two pointers faster runner fast pointer and slow pointer 
and uh, the fast pointer is simply going to keep running with the first element meanwhile uh, uh, fast runner is going to move uh, two steps at a time now we are going to do a run a while loop and the conditions are that while the fast pointer is not equal to null or if the slow pointer and fast pointer ends up at the same position if that is the case then uh, uh, we will keep on running where we are going to call the get next helper method that we created and we are going to keep on providing the value of the slow runner or the fast runner and we are keep on going to update the value the moment we get out of the loop either of the two things could have happened it could have been possible that fast runner found the value to be one or fast runner and slow runner ended up at the same position so if the fast runner value is equal to one we would have returned true if that is not the case we would have returned false and this is the whole solution for the happy number problem let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and again our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions and uh, i hope this solution made sense